it'll come as a shock to you, but I think I might be a nerd. Okay, you may have thought that I would have been tipped off to that fact by the 15 years of tech YouTubing that I've been doing, or the juggling, or trying to impress a girl in Iron Apple with a Rubik's Cube only to impress three guys instead. But what really sealed the deal for me was when I realised, recently, I get more excited by turn-based strategy than I do by anything that's actually exciting. Now don't get me wrong, nothing looks more exciting than Helldiver's frantic alien-on-alien -alien action, nor the idea of landing pixel-precise shots in a frantic first-person shooter game of some sort, but that's just the idea of it. When the chips are actually down, I think I'd rather be building a kick-ass card deck instead. With these kinds of turn-based games, it's the thrill of balancing short-term success against long-term reward, and in refining a strategy you've honed over hundreds of previous playthroughs. And it's about fooling yourself into thinking your latest playthrough's unprecedented success is down to your own skill and expertise at the game, even though a greater chunk of it is more likely down to RNG and sheer dumb luck. Just like you, I hate the idea of card games. It's literally impossible to get excited about one when it's shown to you, and the first time you play one, it will inevitably be confusing and frustrating. But over time, with action shooters, the thrill will gradually dissipate but the joy I get from turn-based strategy only grows with each and every playthrough. Put it like this, card games don't look exciting, but people still play them despite that, because they're that good. Heroes 3, XCOM 2, Slay the Spire 1, they all share some very important things in common. I thought all these games sucked when I first played them, and I remember the exact moment I bothered to give them a real chance, and now after hundreds of hours in each, I would still rather boot up any of these games than to dive into any exciting looking first person shooter again. There's just something gooey and squishy about mastering a shooter game. Aim can get better, your mastery of the guns and the enemies better, but it's still very reflex based and very dependent on the here and now, with very little care for the past and future. But with a card or turn-based game, every decision you make seems to matter in some way. The systems are solid and more refined, and your progress more concrete, and that distant glow of long-term reward shines all the brighter. With a first-person shooter game, when the credits roll, that's the end. But with a turn-based strategy, I'm jumping in for a second, third, fourth playthrough, as I fantasise about all the fantastic card decks I could build, or all those late-stage exploits that I want to exploit just that little bit earlier next time around. With XCOM 2, I literally had to tear myself away after the third Iron Man playthrough because I was genuinely concerned about how much of my life I was wasting simply playing a game that I was enjoying. But I'd be lying if I said the idea of an all-sniper pistol squad wasn't still a tantalising prospect for my next build. Slay the Spire is my latest joy, and what a tough sell this game is. It isn't just a boring old turn-based game, it's a literal card game with literal cards that you collect and use. And it looks like something I could draw, and it's just the battles and nothing else. How lazy! But actually, all this stuff only makes it even more dangerously addictive, for it's pure gameplay. Every decision you make could be life and death, and all meaningful in some way, not just in the short term, but in the long term. Plus, this game's playthrough is short enough for you to beat it in a single session. Hell, just up to an hour long, I could cram maybe two, three, ten playthroughs of this game into a single session. Help, I'm addicted. With this game, I accept there is no end to the grind. There's always the chance you'll stumble upon several cards that work devastatingly well together in a way you'd never imagined they would, or that your deck, although subpar now, could be transformed into a killer combo by an unexpected drop of some kind. I'm never quite sure how much of my success in this game is my own doing, but maybe the key to this game's success is how it strikes that balance, and it's that that keeps me coming back time and time again. It's gambling in all but name, but instead of investing money, I'm investing my time. Slay the Spire is such a finely tuned, wonderful collection of attack patterns, attack combos and random rooms that I daren't suggest how it could be improved. Maybe it can't be. My question is, how long can I justify playing this game for before I can tear myself away from it? 100 hours in and I'm still not ready to let go. Maybe once I finally beat Ascension 20, but maybe not, because then I can just do that with one of the other characters as well. Then I can start stringing wins together, and I know at this point that when I do eventually tear myself away from this game, it's only going to be a year or so before I'm back and doing all this again. So yes, I'm a nerd, and I've held off coming out about this until now, but denying the thrill of card games is like denying that you're gay, even when you've slept with more men than women. But one day, you fall in love with a man so much, and your love is so strong, you no longer want to keep it hidden. You want to flaunt it. And when people mock you for it, rather than feeling ashamed, you just pity them knowing they'll never have all that really awesome gay sex that you're now enjoying. And that's what card games are like for me.